Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. HHS official to spread conspiracy theories allowed back on job. John Cordova, the HHS Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for Administration, will formally resume his duties on Wednesday after being placed on a two-week administrative leave while leaders reviewed his use of social media to promote conspiracy theories. Mr. Cordova has expressed sincere and deep apology for those statements and for any harm or injury he may have caused to readers of any of his social media posts, an HHS spokesperson told Politico. While he continues to work at HHS, Mr. Cordova, along with all department employees, will be expected to demonstrate a full commitment to inclusiveness and respect for all Americans that we serve. Cordova, a former Trump campaign staffer shared false stories about former President Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Senator Ted Cruz, Republican Texas, and others, CNN reported last month. For instance, he suggested that Cruz frequented prostitutes, and he called for a boycott on Budweiser because he said it supported jihadis. Although Cordova was placed on leave after the CNN story, he was repeatedly seen around the Humphrey Building and at his desk. Four HHS staffers told Politico. Cordova has helped lead Dreamagine HHS, an initiative intended to revamp staffing and structure. His office helps oversee HR policy and compliance with equal employment opportunity laws. An HHS spokesperson said the social media posts cited by CNN appear to have been created before Cordova joined HHS and that no complaints have been received about his conduct at HHS through the usual departmental channels. He has acknowledged that he may have allowed the heat of the political campaign to undermine his better judgment, resulting in posted content by him that may have inadvertently offended many, the spokesperson added. Abstinence advocate gets final say on family planning dollars. A senior Trump health official who has promoted abstinence will be the final arbiter of which groups receive federal family planning funds, a change from prior years, when a group of officials made the decision, Politico has learned. Conservatives have long criticized the $286 million Title X program, which funds family planning services, mostly for low income women because it gives money to Planned Parenthood and other groups that provide abortions, even though there is a prohibition on using those dollars for abortions. Now, for the first time, the final decision of who gets the funding will be in the hands of one person, Valerie Huba, the Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary for Population Affairs at HHS, a longtime advocate of abstinence. Prior to joining the Trump administration, Huba was president and CEO of Ascent a national organization that promoted sexual risk avoidance, a term she used instead of abstinence, among young people. Hubei also managed the Ohio Department of Health's sexual risk avoidance program from 2004 to 2007. Women's health advocates on the other side of the debate fear that the Trump administration will funnel money away from groups that provide contraception and toward crisis pregnancy centers that oppose abortion or groups that promote abstinence-only education. This is unprecedented, and has dangerous implications, said Kashif Syed, a senior analyst at the Planned Parenthood Federation of America. We're talking about a program that 4 million people rely on for basic reproductive health care, or in many cases, their only form of health care. Now is not the time to play politics with people's lives, but that's exactly what the trump Pence administration is doing. Planned Parenthood treats about 41% of Title X patients but did not say how much total funding it gets through the program. An HHS official this week confirmed the change in decision-making authority in response to questions from Politico. HHS has been working since 2013 to streamline administrative function for Title X to bring it in line with other grants from the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Health, according to an HHS spokesperson. 
the selection process in the funding opportunity announcement has been updated to reflect that the office head, in this case, the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Population Affairs, will make the final selections, the spokesperson said. The policy change was little noticed when the Trump administration announced the new Title X application process last month, but a close review of this year's application, compared with prior years, shows a change in decision making. Until now, final decisions were made by a regional health official along with the HHS Deputy Assistant Secretary for Population Affairs and the Assistant Secretary for Health, according to language in applications distributed in prior years. The shift comes on top of other Title X policy changes. Administration officials have stressed the importance of abstinence education and downplayed the role of all FDA approved forms of contraception. They mark the latest administration moves against Obama era policies in support of contraception. The administration recently eliminated funding for the Teen Pregnancy Prevention Program and reversed the Obamacare requirement that most employers provide contraception in their employee health plans. Huba believes public health officials should normalize the idea of delaying sex, according to a statement her organization wrote in 2016. As public health experts and policymakers, we must normalize sexual delay more than we normalize teen sex, even with contraception, Huba said in the statement while at end. We believe young deserve the best opportunity for a health future. Huber has criticized American culture in general and Planned Parenthood specifically for normalizing sex among teens and for glossing over the risks of sex before marriage. We think it's very important for teens to know that even if they use a condom or contraception, that doesn't make sex safe. It doesn't mean they won't get pregnant. It doesn't mean they won't have an STD. It doesn't mean they won't have any negative consequences. She said in a 2012 speech to the Bringing America Back to Life Symposium, We think that young people need to know information that is going to help them make the best decision, and that best decision is to wait. Syed criticized Huba for backing abstinence pledges and imposing her opposition to birth control on other people. The trump bence administration is handing the future of the country's program for affordable birth control over to a woman who wants to mandate abstinence pledges, Syed said. Valerie Hoover has called abstinence an anti-poverty program, and has made it clear she will impose her beliefs on people no matter how many get hurt in the process. Title X applications are due in May, and grants will be rolled out in September. As in prior years. Title X applications will be reviewed by an independent review panel, which is typically made up of public health experts. The applications will then go to HUBA, according to the language in the funding announcement. HUBA set a conference call with reporters last month that Planned Parenthood is welcome to apply for funding. But she stressed that she wants to expand the reach of Title X. This is a program that's important to the administration and we think it's really important to make some meaningful changes to extend the coverage of the program," Huba said. Roger Stone pleased Nunberg to cooperate with Russia probe Roger Stone said on Tuesday he was pleased that Sam Nunberg, a former Trump campaign aide, had said he would cooperate with a federal probe into Russian election meddling after initially vowing to reject a subpoena from special counsel Robert Mueller. I would certainly have not advised him to ignore or refuse a document production subpoena, Stone, a longtime confidant of President Donald Trump's, told MSNBC. I was pleased to read today that he's changed his mind about that. Nunberg, in a series of explosive interviews on Monday, pledged to reject a subpoena from Mueller requesting information on his communications with other current and former Trump administration officials, only to backtrack later and say that he planned to cooperate with federal prosecutors. The former Trump campaign aide specifically cited his communications with Stone in initially voicing his intent to not comply. I'm not going to give them every email I had with Steve Bannon and Roger Stone, Nunberg told CNN. I communicated with them every day. I'm not going to testify against Roger. Roger did not do anything. Roger was treated terribly by Donald Trump. 
Stone told MSNBC on Tuesday that he had no idea why Nunberg had been so adamant in expressing his opposition to producing documents regarding their communications, saying that Nunberg marches to his own drummer. Stone added that Nunberg was not speaking at my behest or direction when he made his remarks. In a wide-ranging interview, his first since Nunberg's erratic media tour on Monday, Stone also dismissed the notion that he and Trump had ever spoken about the WikiLeaks hack of Democratic emails during the 2016 campaign. I can honestly say that candidate Trump, Donald Trump, President Trump and I have never discussed the WikiLeaks disclosure, Stone said. He said the same of discussions between him and Trump regarding former Hillary Clinton's emails. The remarks came amid reports that Mueller's team is investigating whether, as a candidate, Trump knew of the hacked emails prior to their release. Stone also denied having contacts with the foreign hacker known as Gussifer 2.0, who released Democratic National Committee documents during the 2016 campaign, prior to the breach of Democratic servers. Stone has previously hailed the hacker as a hero, with the two trading messages on Twitter after the breach.